hopefully by now you've taken time to get yourself accustomed to what's in Edexcel's large data set. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Google Sheets to analyze the correlation between two variables. And hopefully you'll be able to use these techniques to start answering some of your own questions. I'm going to start off with a very simple conjecture of my own, that the higher the daily mean temperature, the lower the total rainfall. You can think about why I'm making that conjecture. I'll leave it to you. I'm going to start out by drawing a scatter graph to see what the data looks like, to see if I can see the correlation. I can do that fairly easily. I select all the data that I need. So I'm clicking and dragging and selecting all the data in the first two columns. There and then clicking insert chart. Now Google throws up a chart I don't want, a bar chart, it's called, a, called it a column chart. But I can change the chart type in order to get the scatter graph that I want. Now the scatter graph there doesn't really show a lot of correlation to me. There's a lot of, it hasn't put the chart titles on, I could add them in customize, but I know that up the side, it's got rainfall, and down the bottom, it's got temperature. And a lot of that rainfall is zero. There are a lot of days where it just didn't rain. And it's all bunched down there, and I can't really see any correlation. So I'll get rid of that, and I'll try a different technique. Now, depending on what stage you're at in your learning, you may or may not have heard of Pearson's correlation coefficient, which is a way that we can attach a number onto correlation from one, which is perfect positive correlation, down to negative one, which is perfect negative correlation, with zero being no correlation and numbers in between indicating different strengths of correlation. We can find that number in Google Sheets, again, fairly easily. We need to use a little formula. I'm going to click on any cell to put the formula in. I just want to know the number. I'm going to press equals, which tells Google Sheets that I'm about to do a formula. All right, Pearson, which is the name of the mathematician who came up with this. Open brackets, and then I'm gonna just do one column at a time. I'm gonna select all of the first column that I need, click and drag all the way down to the bottom. There we go, make sure to get everything. Then comma, which says I'm going to do the next column and select all of the other column. There we go. And then I'll close brackets, the suspense, press enter, 0 0.02, no correlation. Although it says slightly 0 0.02, that means no correlation. It's, it's very close to zero, which I'm quite surprised at. I was quite secure in my conjecture that there'd be correlation there, but there isn't for Heathrow in 2015, which is interesting to know, given my conjecture. So what will actually have a correlation here? Let's have a think. If I do rainfall with cloud cover instead, because there's gonna to need to be clouds for there to be rain, I don't need to delete this whole formula. If I've already got rainfall in there, I can delete the bit that refers to temperature and then select the cloud column instead. So I'm going to select all of that. And there we go. Then I've already got all my brackets. I'm just going to press enter and 0 0.3. And for this much data, that does demonstrate positive correlation. This number, when you dig in, when you learn more about the correlation coefficient, it depends on how much data we have as well. And if we've got loads of data, we need a smaller number to show correlation. And 0 0.3 here for this amount of data does demonstrate positive correlation between cloud cover and rainfall, which is understandable. We could give reasons to that. Maybe a slightly more interesting conjecture now. Not just Heathrow, but how do you think 
the temperature in Heathrow is correlated with the temperature in Perth in Australia at the same time of year. Have a think about that. I think I've got a conjecture in my own head about how those two temperatures on different sides of the world relate on the same time of the year. But let's, let's take a look. The cleanest way of doing this when we're going between two sheets is to make another sheet, make another page of our spreadsheet. I can do that by press, pressing the plus down here. And I might label this new sheet as workspace. This is where I'm gonna do some extra work. And I want the mean temperature in Heathrow and I wanna copy that across to my workspace. So I'm just gonna select the whole column now by clicking on that B at the top, pressing Control C on my keyboard for copy and Control V into that workspace sheet to get it there, to paste it there. I'm gonna label them that one is Heathrow in 2015. Now let's find Perth. I think that's towards the end. Perth 2015 and the temperature again. So copy that column, go back to our workspace. There it is and control V into there. So I've got it in Perth now, Perth in 2015. Let's take a look at that scatter graph. I think if I select the headings as well, it's gonna put that in the scatter graph for us. Let's see if it does. All the way down to the bottom and insert chart as before. Oh, that's not a chart that I want. I want the scatter graph. I think it's that one, scatter chart, yes. Great, and now we can see that looks like there might, there's, some, there's some negative correlation there. It's all in a bunch, but it seems to be gathered around that way. And it has been clever here. It said which one's Perth and which one's Heathrow. I'm gonna keep that chart there and we will attach that number onto it again. Let's do the correlation coefficient again. So equals Pearson, open brackets, and I'll select both columns, first column, comma, second column. There we go, and close brackets, and what's it gonna tell us? negative 0 0.42. That does match the conjecture that I in my head, I had in my head that those two variables are negatively correlated. As you might expect for the seasons being different on opposite sides of the world. One other nice thing that we can do with this scatter graph, now that we know that there's correlation to it, it makes sense for us to draw a trend line on it. Trend lines are only appropriate when we know that there is correlation. We can't just draw a trend line when it's just a mess, but we know there's correlation, so let's draw a trend line. I am gonna double click on the graph and I get the chart edit, this chart editor up at the side again. And I'm gonna add, if I click in series, there's an option in series to add a trend line to it. We've got that line there, and then another option is to click show the equation as a label. And I get the equation of that trend line as negative 0 0.447 times x plus 22.2. So what does that mean? That means the, the gradient of that line is negative 0 0.447. So in general, a prediction here is that for one degree more, if the, if, a, if the temperature on a certain day in Heathrow is one degree more than a different day, then the temperature difference in Perth between those two days will be negative 0 0.447. That gives a rough indication as to how the temperatures vary between Heathrow and Perth that interpretation of that trend line there. 
hopefully you've seen those two things that we've done, the scatter graphs and the Pearson correlation coefficient, and you'll be able to use those techniques to start answering your own questions and finding some correlations, or in the case of temperature and rainfall for Heathrow 2015, some no correlations. Good luck doing all of that yourself.